YouTube, it's Heidi and I am here with a book haul. This is going to be the Scholastic Book Warehouse Sale Book Haul. I have been saving up for this sale for a couple months and um, this sale is through Scholastic and they have a warehouse sale every May to kind of clean out their supplies for the summer and get ready for books to come in for the new school year and it's for teachers and librarians to go and just kind of stock up their classroom shelves. So while I do take advantage of that for my classroom, I also take advantage of that for myself and my own bookshelves. So I'm excited to show you the books that I got. The first book I got is actually going to replace one that I lost in my classroom library, and that is Revolution by Deborah Wiles. And I got this book at that Allen conference that I talked about in one of my videos, and it was actually signed by the author, and one of my students stole it. It's gone. I don't know where it is. So I got a replacement. It's not signed by the author, but at least I have a replacement. Um, and hopefully the student who took my book is enjoying it. The next book I got is Mila 2.0 or Mila 2.0 by Deborah Dreza. I really liked the cover of this and I actually got a copy from that Allen conference as well and I wanted one for my own library so I picked this one up. I then got Grounded The Adventures of Rapunzel by Megan Morrison and I really love fairy tale retellings and so of course I want to read something about Rapunzel. I got I Am Malala by Malala Yousafzai? Yeah, I don't know if I said that right, but I know this book has been around for a long time and I just have never actually read it and I don't, I didn't have a copy even before and so I figured it was at the sale so why not pick it up. Next I got Can't Look Away by Donna Cooner and this one actually I had never heard of but it seemed really interesting. I liked the front of the book. I liked that it had like a little play symbol in the O and it just seems really interesting. Um, it's a person who is famous on the internet. They watch her videos, kind of like a YouTube star. So I don't know, I figured I'm on booktube. Might as well read about another person on YouTube. Next, I got Birthmarked by Kerrig O'Brien and I have not heard of this book at all, but on the cover it says, those marked with a code will determine the future. One marred by a scar will unravel the past. And that just totally screamed like super interesting. And I love the cover and how it's like this ribbon kind of going through the cover. So I picked it up. Next, I got Steelheart by Brandon Sanderson. I have purchased the Mistborn series already by Brandon Sanderson. And so I know this was on my list to purchase and it was actually on my wish list on Amazon, but it was super cheap at the Scholastic book sale and it actually wasn't even $5. It was less than that. So I picked this one up. Next, I got The Orphan Queen by Jody Meadows. And I have heard of this book all around booktube and I know the second book just came out in this series. And so I figured it was at the Scholastic book sale and I would pick it up so that I could read the first one and then get the second one. Next, I got Rump, the true story of Rumpelstiltskin by Liesl Shirtliff. And again, like I said before with the Rapunzel one, I love a good fairy tale retelling and this one was on sale, so picked it up. Then I got, if you're reading this, it's too late by Pseudonymous Bosch. And this is a series that I was actually recommended by one of my eighth graders, like four or five years ago. And it seemed really interesting, especially since the author's name is Pseudonymous. Um, if that's how you say it. It's, I know it's pseudonym, but I don't know how you say pseudonymous. Anyway, um, and so this was there and I was like, oh, I remember that I was recommended that series by a student. So I got to pick this one up. Then I got Hattie Ever After by Kirby Larson. And this book just, I love the cover of this book. I have seen this book around, I don't know if it's Amazon or booktube. I actually don't even remember where I've seen it before, but I knew that I had seen this book before and loved the cover. And so I wanted to pick it up again. It was actually cheaper than $3 and it's a hardcover. So great sale scholastic. I then got three classics that I picked up and I have seen this cover version of these classics on, I think it is Zoe's channel read by Zoe. I, Think. Um, I can't remember. But anyway, I picked up Heidi because A, that's my name, and B, it was there. I picked up A Little Princess, and I also picked up Anne of Green Gables. And they just match, and I thought they were beautiful, and so I thought I would pick them up. Next, I picked up The Possibility of Now by Kim Culbertson. This seems like a super fun contemporary, and as summer is coming up, I am really wanting to read some contemporary novels, especially YA. I actually haven't read that many YA contemporary novels, and so I thought that I would stock up at the Scholastic Book, wa book Warehouse sale and see if I could find some ones that I like. 
I then got Red Queen for my classroom library because so many students have talked about wanting to read this book and it was there and it's paperback so it was nice and cheap so now I can have it in my classroom for my students. I then got The Girl of Fire and Thorns by Ray Carson. I actually own this book myself so this is going in my classroom as well. I love the cover of it and I know I have some students who would absolutely love this book so it's going in my classroom. I then picked up The Memory of Light by Francisco Stork and I got an arc of this book at the Allen Conference and it's in my classroom and so I wanted a copy for my own shelves. I then got a copy of The Isle of the Lost by Melissa De La Cruz. This is a Descendants novel and this was a movie that was put out by Disney and it was about the children of the villains in the fairy tale world and I again love fairy tale retellings but also love the whole idea of what's the backstory of the villains and what happens to them. Do they have kids? Do they not? I did a review on the books Flunked and Charmed which are also fairy tale retellings and I I will link that right here as well as down below so you can go see that review if you would like and you're interested in those books, but this is another fairy tale retelling. I then purchased Echo by Pam Munoz Ryan and I have not heard of this book nor have I read anything about it. I literally didn't even read what it was about, but the fact that it is a Newbery Honor book and it's a nice big book and it's hardcover and I loved the cover of it with these trees and these two little kids on the ground here, it just pulled me in. So we'll see if I like it. I'll let you know. Then I picked up Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library by Chris Grabenstein and I loved the cover of this too and the fact that it's in a library and I'm hoping that it will be good. I then picked up a hardcover copy of the one by Kiara Cass and it is going to go right on this shelf. If you see, there's the paperback one right back there. It's gonna replace the paperback and I'll put the paperback one in my classroom library. So then the only hardback that I have to get or purchase is the selection and then I can start marathoning this series. I know that there are mixed opinions about this series but I absolutely love the covers of this series. Just the fact that the dresses kind of take up the whole cover and there's mirrors in the background and that each of the covers is a different color. So we have blue and red and this one's white and then we have this like gray and then purple. I am very excited to read it. The next book I picked up was called The Lost Track of Time by Paige Britt, and I had never heard of this one before, but I loved the cover again. I don't know, covers pull me in. And I know we're not supposed to judge books by their covers, but that's the thing that gets you to buy them half the time. And so I just love that there was a clock and it actually like goes into the um, sidewalk here and the colors on this are beautiful. And I don't know what it is with me and heavy books. They're, I don't know, they seem really appealing to me. I like the Leviathan series, which I, th I have it up here. It's Leviathan, Behemoth, and Goliath. Those are heavy books. And to me, that is really appealing. I have no idea why, but like that, this one is a very heavy book. It's a nice hardback and the back of it I really liked too. Lost time, hard time, own street time. And a lot of it was about time. Again, we have the clock on the front, so we'll see if I like it. There's some illustrations in the book that I thought were kind of pretty. I'm oh, sorry, there's a glare on the sun. Um, but anyway, we'll see if I like it. Next, I picked up Bone Out from Boneville by Jeff Smith, and I am just getting into graphic novels. I actually haven't read any yet. I do have March 1 and March 2. I also have the Lumberjanes um, 1 and 2 series up on my bookshelf, and so I'm just kind of sort of gathering graphic novels as I can, make, obviously when they're cheap, um, and we'll see if I like it. I know a lot of people have talked about the Bone series and that they really like it, and the first one was at the Scholastic Sale, so I thought, well, what a good time to pick up the first one. Next, I got A Frozen Heart by Elizabeth Rudnick, and this is based on the movie Frozen, which I absolutely love because who doesn't love Anna and Elsa and all the songs? And I'm not quite sure if this is actually the story of Frozen or if it is something based on Frozen, but I'll let you know when I read it. Next, I got The Start of Me and You by Emery Lord, and I picked this one up again because I figured it was a good YA contemporary. I love the cover of this one. I also love Emery Lord. I have another book by her, and I actually can't remember what it is, but as soon as I figure out what it is, I'm just gonna put the cover right up here for you so that you know what I'm talking about. And again, I just wanted another fun contemporary YA novel to read in the summer. Next, I got Peter Nimble and His Fantastic Eyes by Jonathan Oxier, and I figured this was maybe a fairy tale retelling, but I loved the cover of it because it kind of reminds me of Mary Poppins a little bit and the chimney sweeps and running across the uh, roofs of houses. And I know that's um, Big Ben in the background, so we're possibly in London and I love London, so it looked interesting. 
Next, I got Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. I actually have a hardcover copy of this in my own library, so this is going in my classroom library. I know a ton of people on BookTube love Morgan Matson. I have not read any of her books yet, but I figure if everyone else loves it, then my students are probably going to love it too, so picked up a paper copy for them. Next, I picked up Elemental by Anthony John, and this book, literally again, another cover by. Um, it was super pretty. I thought it would probably have to do with people controlling the elements, and that's very interesting to me as well. And so I thought I would give it a shot. Then I picked up Firefight by Brandon Sanderson, which is The Reckoner's Book 2. I already showed The Reckoner's Book 1, and this is the hardcover of it. It was not $10.99. It was cheaper than that. So again, of course I have to buy it because everyone loves Brandon Sanderson, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to love him too. And last but certainly not least, I actually got the Harry Potter coloring book of magical creatures. I literally was not going to buy these coloring books because I wasn't going to spend $10 on something that I wasn't going to color in because my personal opinion is, well, it's wonderful to think that like I could color you know, the werewolves and I could possibly color some owls. I would not do them justice because I don't really think that I'm a great artist. So I wasn't going to buy these ever. I had already decided. But then it showed up at the Scholastic Warehouse sale and it was literally like 75% off. And so it was probably like $3. And I figured, well, if it's $3, I guess I can buy it and just have it. And if I color in it, I color in it. If I don't, I have it. So those are all the books I got at the Scholastic Book Warehouse sale. I hope you enjoyed this book haul. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy my videos, I would so appreciate you subscribing. I know that that's kind of weird to ask people to subscribe, but you know what? If you enjoy my videos, I would love to have you subscribe. I will leave a link to Scholastic's website down below. I don't really know if there's anything that you can purchase off their website if you're not a teacher, um, but just because I have teacher access, I know I have a lot more access to books and to resources on there. Other than that, I hope you all have a wonderful day. It is gorgeous outside. I'm going to go meet my parents for dinner after this, and then it's Mother's Day tomorrow. So if any of you watching are mothers, happy Mother's Day to you. You absolutely deserve of your day and I hope you do something that is fun for you maybe take some time to actually read because I know if you have little kids that does not happen very often so have an awesome weekend you guys and I'll be back with another video soon bye everyone